Okay, so this one is sneaky. Uh, part of me really wants to arithmetize here, but I've got a little bit of a problem I've got to contend with. And it's important to notice when this happens in a question on the SAT. The word could is changing things up here. Which of the following could be the value of C? When they use that word, what they're saying is there are multiple possible values of C, but only one of them appears in these answer choices. And for some reason, the others are wrong, right? So it's hard to know then. We're basically, we're not going to be able to necessarily solve for C, which is one of the benefits of arithmetize is when we put in numbers, we're able to kind of get a, a different number out. So my, my instinct would have been, let me make up numbers for X and B, and then all that's left is C and I can solve for C. But what if I make up a number for B that doesn't quite work is really what it comes down to. That doesn't give me one of the answer choices. It might give me a valid uh, number for C, but it might not give me one that's a choice. And so I've got to be a little bit more clever if I'm going to do that. What I could do is just make X go away. So if I arithmetize here, I might recognize that it seems to be that B and C are the, the, the stars of this show. So if we make X equal to zero, suddenly this is a much easier thing to think about. Basically, we end up with negative C over negative B, and that's supposed to be equivalent to X plus B. So if B, X is zero, then this is just equal to B. So the negatives cancel. So we end up with C, uh, what's running out of space, C over B is equal to B. Or another way to put that is C is equal to B squared, right? If I multiply both sides by B, we get rid of the fraction, and we also understand the relationship. C has to be a perfect square. And the reason is that B and, and C both have to be positive integers. So we have to think what B could be. It ha Whatever it is, it's got to be a number that's squared. So for example, if C were 4, then B could be 2. But if C were six, well, then what's B, right? It's the square root of six. That's not a nice number. That's not an integer. And the same thing would happen for eight, right? This would be the square root of eight, which is also a decimal. And then this would be the square root of 10. Um, so uh, I got to put these squares here to, to really make it clear, I guess. But there you go. That's what I'm seeing it as, right? So the six equals the six radical six squared. That is true. But in that case, for choice B, uh, the letter B would be a messy number, right? So that doesn't work. And only choice A is going to involve a perfect square that, that could be square rooted. Um, and so maybe I should have just done this. Is another way to write this thing is the square root of C is equal to B. So in order for us to use the radical with the C and get a nice number, we would need to have a perfect square. That's still very conceptual, which I don't love, but at least maybe it's a little less conceptual than if we had done it the algebraic way, which would have been to kind of write this equation as is, x squared minus c over x minus b is equal to x plus b. I, some of you might just see it when it's written like this, but my instinct is still to kind of multiply this across. So I'd have x squared minus c is equal to x plus b times x minus b. And hopefully at that point, everyone would recognize that this is difference of two squares, dots factoring, right? So x plus b times x minus b, if we if we factored the x squared minus c, we would need it kind of to be a square root situation there, or you can kind of foil this out. x squared minus c is equal to x squared plus bx minus bx minus b squared. These cancel x squared minus c is equal to x squared minus b squared. And now we kind of end up in the same place where c and b squared are representing the same term. And we have to think of now again about squares and, and stuff like that. And maybe we start guessing and checking at this point. It's kind of a necessary to guess and check here. You have to kind of do it in some way. But I think this is weird. I, th I think my instinct would have been to use a strategy. It doesn't really work because of the, 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 the openness of the question, um, but that's why I put this exercise together is we need to start thinking about where the strategies kind of meet their limits. This is one of those cases. And, and it doesn't really hurt to try it. Uh, it, it. The best thing about arithmetize, in my opinion, is when we try it, it doesn't really take a long time to fail. So yes, it's a quick thing when it succeeds, but it's also a quick thing when it fails. And so we don't lose a lot of time, especially if we were confused trying something is better than nothing. And maybe in the something, you kind of start to understand the question on a deeper level that allows you to try something else and actually get it right. So be open-minded, try the strategies as much as possible, but hopefully this entire exercise has helped you kind of see where things can work and where we're gonna have to do it a more traditional way.